everybody, you're watching Call the Corn Star. If you're even slightly interested in farming or just want to watch a 25 year old farmer get some stuff done, you're in the right place. Hey, and with summer quickly coming around the corner, be sure to check out the link in the description and pick up a Corn Star Farms hat and re help represent the farm. And also to help represent, we got these new stickers. These things are really cool. Check out the link in the description below. You can pick up both of these. <laughs> Oh, what do we got here? We got the Scrap trailer sitting in the yard. We got Pete's truck with his kayak in the back. Scrap guys were here early spring, late winter, and it started to get really muddy on them, so it's impossible for them to get around at Uncle Orland's farm. But now, weather's dried up. They are back. They're going to get it cleaned up. So they're down there working right now. Before we can go check on them, we have a really busy day today. And check this out. Oh, that light just turned on. Now watch this. Watch this. We're walking. We're walking. Oh, that light turned on. Now watch this one. Oh. Oh, does anyone want to watch that one? Oh, look at that. Here's another one. Wait, that one's not hooked up yet. Neither is that one. I'm going to get down here. Ready? Ready? Uh. Oh, look at that. Look at that. <laughs> oh, we got to get these in ones. Look at that. Uh. Last one. Ha, ha, ha. That is so cool. So I ended up wiring up the heated shop with Cooper and Dad, and we got two rows in the front and two rows in the back. And notice how we don't have the two rows in the middle? Well, I thought we could just use two light switches and then just do the front half of the building. So these front three rows on one switch, back three rows on another. I don't know a lot about electricity other than what I learned in the nine minute YouTube video that I watched of how to wire up a three way switch, but. I have overloaded circuits. Each one of these lights pulls just under two amps of electricity. So when I had all nine of these lights on one switch, we were pulling 18 amps through this entire circuit. And that whole circuit is running on this 20 amp breaker. So we're running 18 amps up there. We have a 20 amp breaker. We should be good to go, but no, because it comes to find out when you're running continuous load like that, you have to derate it to 80%. So 20 amps times 80% is 16 amps. We're running 18 amps when we should be running 16. So we're overloading the circuit. So I ended up making a little mistake. We had this extra 14 gauge Romex wire laying around. So, you, you know, trying to be cost effective. I said, well, why don't we just strip this off and then just use what we have inside of here? So each one of these lights pulls two amps of electricity. When we had all nine of these on, that is 18 amps of electricity. 14 gauge wire, come to find out, is rated for 15 amps. The frustrating part about it is I use that 14 gauge to go from this box right up over the garage door to the light switches. So it is supplying power to the light switches. Otherwise we use 12 gauge for everything else that's running up there. So in order for me to run lights, I need 18 amps of power. The problem is since we used 14 gauge wire, we have to run a 15 amp circuit. So we are not running enough juice. <laughs> Or we can't run enough juice, otherwise we blow the 15 amp breaker. Ah! So we have two options. We can either leave it as it is right now, so one of the light switches will control these back lights. The other light switches by the door will control the front lights. Now the problem is these center lights do not have a light switch controlling them, but we can put juice from the box up through the conduit, and then we can just be running live to that all the time since these are on motion sensors when we walk in they will automatically turn on and then they're on a timer when we leave so we won't have to shut them off with the light switch it's just i i don't like how it is where one switch turns on that the other switch turns on that and then my centers aren't on a switch at all it just feels real hokey pokey mickey mousey I, I don't like it my other option would be to tear everything down after we spent two days putting up all the electricity inside of those and it was a bear cat getting all that conduit and wiring together oh man i tell you what so we're gonna end up doing both we're just gonna run power up to those lights for now so that way we can use the shop and then if we get a stretch of some rain or something i'm putting in a contactor and a single switch and then we can turn everything on with one switch. I wish I knew about contactors before we got into all this, but School of Hard Knocks is an excellent teacher, as I like to say. But that's another problem for another day. Right now, we need to worry about getting that pump over to the big water tank, so that way we can start getting stuff filled up, and then we can start spraying. Easy does it! Perfect spot. Our sprayer trailer, while quite the unit, definitely has its flaws. When we've tried pulling water out of this tank in the past, we used the pump that was on the trailer, so it was this high off the ground. Now the problem is, if the water level was below my hand, then there wasn't enough head pressure from the tank to get the water pressure up into the pump, and then so then you'd get an airlock, and then you'd spend forever and a half trying to get your airlock out. It was really frustrating, especially when you're wanting to spray, and you're trying to spend two hours just to get 
water to go into a pump. So cue the idea of this little guy. We just have this sitting on the ground that we can just hook up right to that. So that way the water level can be way down here and it automatically feeds to the pump right away. We don't get an airlock. Then we can just pump this right into the semi-trailer. Take off in 10 minutes. Hold on a second, Ellie. Oh, good morning, Ellie. Good morning. Oh, what are we doing up in here? What are we doing up in here? Oh, you want to go fried this skin loader? Huh? Oh, nope. Oh, you want to watch dog. Watchdog. First agenda on the list today, we're gonna to pull the sprayers out. We have Mary Lou's, Winona's, and Carol's left to spray. Then we are done with all of our soybean ground. I take that back. I have about 20 acres left at campground. Oh yeah. Hands free, baby. Filling up. Right now that chemical is getting pulled all the way through that, through the flow meters, and I'm not touching anything. It's doing it all itself. And once we get full of everything, it automatically shut off too. You look like a telemarketer. What are you selling? Hey, good morning everybody. Another beautiful, beautiful day. Chilly to the start, but it looks like it's gonna be a fantastic day. I jumped into the New to us sprayer. So far, I've been the one running it. We're kind of trying to get each guy used to the piece of equipment they're running. This is so different than our other sprayer. They're the same sprayers, but things still activate different. Just got campground knocked off. Had about 35 acres left to do there. That's all done. Now we have probably a half hour road trip down to Mary Lou's. We're gonna go to the north side. Oh, tight driveway. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Mary Lou's. I'm empty. Cooper just got here to Mary Lou's. Sounds like dad's on his last load right over there that water tower at Winona's. And I got 130 acres left over here. All right, we got coal out here spraying on a beautiful day. If you look at that sprayer there, I'm in one just like it. And I'm amazed how much different both of them are. The only thing is big time difference. I get the new Ag Leader setup. We have individual shutoffs on each nozzle every 15 inches. So if I get in a spot and I start crossing over, Jink, 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 jink. They shut off. And then when you cross back over, jink, 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 jink. So that is a really, really awesome thing. I suppose I better set my auto swath back on too. And this is the power steering, not power steering, but power steering is right here in my wrist. That's power steering. This is auto steer. And just like that, we're done at Mary Lou's. 160 acres on that side, 80 acres over there. Dad's done with Winona's. We just have 106 acres left at Carol's. I forgot to film, but we got Carol's done too. We are done spraying soybean grow. This is such a good feeling. Now I got about a half hour drive home. We'll get everything cleaned up, get all the booms and stuff rinsed out, so we'll get all the bean chemical out. And hopefully we'll Maybe start getting planters ready to go plant some beans. <laughs> we sound like an airplane. Now that we're done spraying, we're ready to plant as soon as the soil starts to warm up a little bit. But in the meantime, we have been doing a lot of waterway work this past spring, so all the low spots in the field where the water flows to, they were just completely rutted out. You could not drive through them with a tractor at all, so we've had Ron the bulldozer guy out here for like the last two weeks. He's been doing a ton of work. So now we need to get places like this smoothed out, so that way we can get them grass seeded. Places that are really flat don't have things like this, but since we're fairly rolly through here, there's a lot of natural springs across the road that seep out of that hillside. So then they end up running to the low spot, then they run right through here, and then they end up passing underneath of the road, and we have a big pipe that comes under the road, so that way the water can travel through. This is called a culvert. So once that water comes through, it comes in on this side, so we have a nice just dip where the water goes. Once we have grass planted on it, the grass keeps the soil from washing away, so that way we don't get a bunch of soil erosion, and it gives the water a nice area to go. Before Ron reshaped this, it kind of went along the side of the grass, so it was just taking soil with it, and then the grass was serving absolutely no purpose. This would be a prime example. All the water's running right on the side of the waterway through that big old ravine. We want it to run through the center 
of the grass. So really what needs to happen, this needs to get dug out so that way it's scooped. And then the low point is dead center in the middle of the grass. And then that will be gone. In the field that goes right around mom and dad's house, he started with going right along the edge of the ditch, kind of smooth that off so we can get the lawnmower up there to actually mow. He did the same thing over here. He's got just a little bit more to go right there up to that electrical pole. Then this big waterway is about three acres and it's always been rough until now. So this is really weird for me to look at. The edges of our fields right along the ditches tend to get really high so they get a ridge on them and when you're coming through with the cornhead snoot that's made of poly and it hits those ridges you rip them off and it's like a $500 mistake every time you do it. So I had Ron do some smoothing up through here along this whole old fence line and then where there's another culvert coming under the road here it was like a four foot deep ravine. And it was kind of sketchy. If you got equipment over in that, you could get stuck down in there. So he smoothed that off. So we have some terraces in this field. They're made in the early 1980s. And when they made them, for some reason, they made them go all the way up on top of hills and stuff. So Ron kind of reshaped these back a little bit because they were only like 40 feet from right there to that pole. And our 60 foot planter could not fit through. So we ended up widening it back a little ways. And he did the same thing up on the top one. Then on this back fence, he went all the way down to the creek. Got that nice and smoothed out. Then from just a vantage perspective, anywhere that's dark soil across the landscape that we're looking at, those are all areas that Ron has also done. So we got the bush farm over there and then the Hanson farm over there. So now that finger, that finger, and there's one hiding down in there. Those prohibited that farm from being able to plant mile long rows all the way through. So now that they're all smoothed out, we'll get them grass seeded. We'll be able to start down at that gravel road and then we'll be able to plant the entire way up on top of the hill right there, all the way to the other gravel road without having to turn around at all. Mile long rows. Bush farms three quarter mile long rows. And they got some just about half mile long rows right here on the field around dads. Really cool big upgrades to the farm. I'm just really excited about this stuff because this is things that I've been thinking about doing since I was a little boy. So literally my entire life, I've been dreaming of getting these projects done. And now that they're coming into fruition, it's just a, a really good feeling. And then the other farm that Ron's working on is the field we call West of Dad's House because this is the farm that's West of Dad's House. There's a really big waterway in here that was worked probably 20 years ago by Ron. We got like five inches of rain right after he did it and it completely ruined it. So now here he is back again. Got a big old thing through here. There's like five acres of grass by the time you get to the other side of the field. And then all those fingers that go up on the hills there, he's gonna be smoothing out. So this is gonna be a really big improvement. Cooper should get like 50 hay bales per cutting just off this one grass waterway alone. There's a lot of areas like this where the grass gets tall and then they have these giant ravines inside of it. And so it makes it pretty much almost impossible to drive through about 75% of this waterway the way it currently is. Big holes like that get really dangerous when you're driving along because when the grass is tall, if you fall in with the front wheel of something, you can snap it off, which is never a fun thing. And if you're walking through here, I know there's a couple sinkholes out and about through here because Dave, our tile guy, he's six feet, four inches tall. One day he was walking in this one looking for a tile line and he ended up falling into a sinkhole that was full of water and he went in below his head. And Dave can't swim. So that would be terrifying. Looks like Ron's got the hard part done. It was really deep down at that end. He's got some stuff done up on the hills, which is super exciting because those, you'd get up to them. They were like three foot deep. It would jar the whole combine, whatever tractor, whatever we were running up there, which was not very fun. Sounds like the soil is starting to dry up a little bit now. It's starting to work a lot better for Ron. He's in his B6R cat bulldozer. He makes that look easy. Look at that big hole you're going to be falling into. Hey, there's a pheasant. It's a hen. That thing's a monster. Look, there's water down in there. I bet that thing's five feet deep. And look, it continues on on the back side of it even. Another big hole right there. So we're going to let Ron do his thing. Dad and Cooper are just right over this hill on Uncle Erlen's farm. Cooper's in the disc right now. He's smoothing out some of the stuff that Ron's already done to get it smooth. That way we can get the real disc in there later to final finish it out. Steve, our grass seeder guy, he's out grass seeding some waterways that we already have done. And dad's over in Uncle Orleans too, picking up some rocks and little trees with the skid loader. And then I am in the John Deere XUV. I think that's what it is. 
Yeah, the XUV 835M, this bad guy came from Van Wall. Since we accidentally boundaried all of our fields using a WASP receiver, I got our RTK receiver up on the top now. I have to redo all of our boundaries. Last time I did this, it took me 26 hours. So hopefully, now that I got the hang of it, I can do it in like 20. When I found out we had to redo everything, I gave Gary at Van Wall a little jingle, and he said they had a gator available for me to use. So that's what we're doing. We got the Ag Leader in Command 1200 mounted up inside of here, and then we're running the GPS 7500 receiver up on top. I really hope I do it right this time because I don't want to do it again. Hmm. Is that what they call a crop circle? Whee! First farm we're going to redo is campground. Now, uh, take a look what we're doing today. Got the skid loader out here. We're picking up. Oh, we had a bunch of trees and stuff around the fence rows we cleared out. Now I'm out picking up the little branches and stuff. We got campground done and while we're here, we also ended up doing all of our guidance lines, if I can click on it. So now when we come into the field, we can pick a line and it's already pre-measured away from all the fences and stuff, exactly the angle we would like to go. So that's, that's pretty handy to do. Now this just takes time to set up. It probably took me an hour to do 50 acres here. Now there's also a lot of ins and outs on this farm. But that farm's 300 acres, and that has more ins and outs, so that one's gonna take me a little while. Genuine question, they just rebuilt this road last year, so they dug out the ditches and then they built it up. Now, when we build a new driveway, they told me that I had to go out three feet for every foot I was high on a gravel road, and if it's a highway for every eight feet I had to go out, I could have a foot of rise. So, I don't know, maybe I'm not, looking at this correctly but that ditch looks awfully deep and it has an awfully steep driveway that thing's probably nine feet tall my calculation's correct from the top should go out 27 feet we've been at it for about seven hours we've done 450 acres so far and we've put just about a little over 40 miles on the gator. That's what Melvin's farm looks like. I apologize for the lack of filming. I got 600 acres done. I have 1,400 to go. I am so cold. I'm gonna go stand in the shower for like an hour. Oh.